Okay, all right. Welcome back, everybody. So we are going to proceed with our next presentation. Unshare my screen so that Diana or Reese can come um, up and present their stuff. Can you see it? I can see it, Reese. Okay. So I'm Reese Vaughn, and my partner Diana Malenkova and I researched Bruton's tyrosine kinase and the disease X linked gamma globulinemia, and we looked for a potential new gene therapy target. So the focus of our research, XLA or X linked gamma globulinemia, is a primary immunodeficiency which is inherited in an X linked recessive manner. It's primarily characterized by a lack of mature B cells, which translates to a very low rate of ab antibody production, which could also just be entirely absent. This causes patients to be prone to developing severe or possibly life-threatening infections, since a significant part of the immune response is completely absent. XLA is caused by mutations in the Bruton tyrosine kinase gene, which is named after the doctor who initially characterized XLA. The BTK protein is important at multiple points in the B cell development process, such as preventing the apoptosis of developing B cells, allowing young B cells to enter the S phase of the cell cycle, and participating in the pathway that causes mature B cells to spe specialize into plasma cells, which produce antibodies. So the absence of functional BTK impairs these pathways and therefore causes XLA through a multitude, a multitude of different ways. We also looked into three genes which perform functions similar to or linked to those of BTK, BCR or B cell receptor, which plays a large role in B cell activation into plasma cells, APRIL, a proliferation inducing ligand, which contributes to B cell development and the long-term survival of plasma cells, and B lymphocyte stimulator or BLIS, which activates B cells into plasma cells and stimulates their proliferation and differentiation. So for this part of the project, LIST, Bioprofiler, GeneView, Core Analysis, and Canonical Pathway functions were used. The bioprofilers helped in generating LISTs, seeing molecules involved in diseases, and opening GeneView to read more about the gene functions. And to create a list of genes which could affect presentation of XLA and XLA patients, three separate lists were first created and then unified based on overlapping genes and functions. Uh, since XLA was the disease of interest, first list was created for molecules related to XLA. Uh, BTK gene was selected as the main gene of interest because it was considered most correlated. BTK is known for B cell development and proliferation, so a list of B cell development genes related to immunological disease was the second list created. Since um, immunoglobulin G, or IgG, appeared in both lists 1 and 2, a third list of immunoglobulin G-related genes, which contribute to immunological disease, was created. From there, we noticed that um, TNF, or tumor necrosis uh, family factor, which also appeared in the first list was present. So those three lists gave around 13 common genes which were used to access IPA gene view. And the figure in the next slide is a combination of information in the gene view reports and the bioprofiler. From the bioprofiler, it was further found that all of the genes of interest are actually unified under a canonical pathway of systemic lupus erythematosus in B cell signaling pathway, which gave more suspicions to believe that TNF genes along with BTK, might be more related to XLA since they're in the same canonical pathway for another immunological disease. From further readings into TNF molecules, which can potentially be related to XLA, two specific TNF molecules were identified, April and Bliss. In other words, XLA literature search with IPA helped to identify six main genes and chemicals of interest, BTK, B cell receptor, immunoglobulin G, TNF, uh, ligand family, TNF-SF13, also known as April, and TNF-SF13B, also known as Bliss. Next slide. So uh, the IPA figure created shows the diseases related to each other and the functions those genes have overall. From the disease list, it is visually observed that while only two of the genes shown are related to XLA directly in literature, majority of the genes really um, interact with each other in other diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus erythematosus. From this information, conclusion can be drawn that more than the two genes related to XLA shown on this list are likely related to XLA. All of the genes um, here are related to cell proliferation and development, the two functions which XLA patients lack when it comes to B cells. 
Overall, this figure provides greater detail in understanding interactions on the functional scale. By understanding basic functions of genes and observing the similar disease, um, similar diseases that different genes relate to, novel conclusions can be made about new diseases that are identified. All right, so my primary figure from IPA was generated using the pathway tool, and the initial search terms that we used were BTK, XLA, BCR, and immunoglobulin G, which were all entered into the uh, the pathway search bar under the relevant category. And after we researched some articles relating to all of these, we added the search terms April and Bliss, which are displayed in the figure as tumor necrosis factor super, super family members 13 and 13B, or TNFSF for short. After we had these primary nodes set up in the pathway, we used the grow tool limited to only immunological disease nodes to expand the pathway by about 20 molecules and applied the connect tool to fill in any missing relationships between them. We then trimmed the results down to a total of 12 nodes, which are seen in the figure. After that, we used the IPA gene view and relationship summary tools to gain background knowledge on the genes of interest and to the primary relationships between them. So the most important relationships that this finger, figure brings to light are how BTK and therefore XLA are indirectly and directly linked to all of the elements within the figure, which are in turn all related to how B cells in their development progress. They are primarily linked through immunoglobulin G, as you can see by it being in the center of the figure. And uh, BTK's multitude of functions are pretty closely related to BCR, April, and Bliss. Uh, and also to IgG, among other things, which led to our focus on these different pathways by which BTK is linked to B-cell development. This is significant because um, B-cell development and, or <laughs> this is significant because the gene therapy treatments that are currently being worked on for XLA are still very primitive, and most or all of them focus solely on just replacing the dysfunctional BTK gene, which brings along a risk of on, uh, insertional oncogenesis because of the viral vectors used, which basically is inducing cancer in an already very immunocompromised patient, which is evidently not a good thing. Therapies targeted at other genes or proteins may be, may be able to entirely avoid this problem and allow for the development of safer and more effective treatments for XLA. In conclusion, this project focuses on utilizing prior findings and research on XLA to gather together all the known information into a comprehensive body of knowledge about what exactly causes the disease. Uh, while nothing was done hands-on in labs, the readings regarding XLA and BTK interactions were examined in a novel way, um, which helped to realize that there can be new treatment options such as gene therapy. Because there is much more than BTK gene involvement, the treatment options can range past BTK gene. New treatments can focus on B-cell development, for example. Uh, there was one study in which tested functional BTK insertion via a lentiviral vector. However, the authors of the research concluded that this method is not yet perfected because current lentiviral vac vector uh, provides a potential risk of viral genomic integration and requires insulator sequences. Although we initially hypothesized that April and Bliss levels can be amplified in XLA patients because the functions are so similar to BTK, um, it was later found that amplification genes, such um, amplification of genes such as April, um, is actually commonly found in cancer patients. Because more research must be done to avoid possible hazards to patients, intravenous immunoglobulin treatments that are done now uh, seem to be most plausible when it comes to treatment up to date. Next slide. So one of our largest experience takeaways from this project so far is how complex of an effect one gene and its product can have on the body. XLA is for the most part caused only by the BTK gene directly, but BTK has so many other interactions with various uh, genes and their protein products that all of these different pathways come together to ensure B cell development through BTK and its signaling effects. This means that if BTK is dysfunctional, it causes XLA through the failure of multiple pathways, and it's not just a one-to-one -one relationship of protein failure to disease. This network of genes is significantly more complicated than just a direct correlation. Not all of the interactions present on this genomic level may be immediately apparent, as was the case here, but we feel significantly more familiar and confident using the IPA software to assist in omics research now, which will definitely come in handy in the future. Beyond future research, though, something that we both gained from this is that as pre-med students, we find the human body to be very interesting, and learning more about just how complex it is kind of brought us back to our basis for our interest in biology in the first place. 
So finally, we want to thank uh, Dean Peter Shoemaker and Dean Shayla Riley for supporting undergraduate research and funding for the continued use of IPA software. And we also want to thank Dr. Cottrell for helping us uh, throughout this project. And here are our references. Okay, nice job, Diana and Reese. And we are going to move on to our next um, top, our next topic, our next presenter.